Hello and welcome back to another new tank breakdown. And once again, I'm late to the party. But the coof and dental surgery don't give a crap about my upload schedule. So I'm going to grab an unhealthy fistful of ibuprofen and start this ride. So before I begin in earnest, please take a moment to sub and maybe like the video. It really does help me out. And let's take a look at a few viewer comments because this is always an absolute treat. I do love being threatened in the comments. My brother in Christ, cringe. Anyway, I do read actually read all of your comments. I may not always answer back, but unless you're a world-class twat waffle, you better believe I'm going to give you the old thumbs up and at least a like. But so anyway, General Dynamics Land System recently revealed its new technological demonstrator, the Abrams X, or as I've come to know it, what the Armada should actually be if it was built by a competent nation and military industrial complex. We'll do a general overview of a few key features of this demonstrator and see how it looks from a crewman's perspective. Information released about it is still rather sparse, but I'm pretty sure we can sort reality from wishful thinking. So at a first glance, I noticed a few key features or lack thereof. The hull and turret are extremely clean looking. Even though it's new, it still looks like an Abrams, so it's not a huge departure from the ordinary when it comes to general dynamics. What does appear to be a whole new system incorporating existing technologies that have been added onto the Abrams via the SEP V2, 3, and 4 variants of the M1A2, plus a whole new host of emergent battlefield technologies. There are three new key main features of this tank that are a stark departure from standard American doctrine. They are an unmanned turret, an autoloader system, and a three-man crew positioned where the driver traditionally is. So there really is a lot to unpack with this vehicle, but again, information really isn't too forthcoming on it, so I can't give you specs on armor or composition or thickness or even the generator displacement or output. But Timothy Reese from General Dynamics Land System has stated in interviews, while it's a radical design for the tank, it takes a lot of lessons learned from the last two decades of tank engagements and fighting even up into Ukraine today. One of those lessons is the change out from the pack from the fuel-hungry turbine to a diesel-electric hybrid with a secondary power generator, which is a reported to have as much punch as the turbine at 50% of the fuel savings. Now, having had to hump juries in the scorching, stinking-ass desert, crewmen's backs everywhere will thank General Dynamics for that. Other than that, let's look at those three key features I mentioned earlier. The unmanned turret is and isn't lower profile compared to its manned counterpart. And what I mean by that is the main turret body is a way and far better streamlined and lower than its predecessor. However, there's a 30 millimeter remote weapon station on top and two independent hunter killer sites. It also contains a four pack of switchblade loitering munitions, blowout panels on all ammunition storage, and trophy art active protection system. Well, trophy is installed on the demonstrator, it is not wedded to it allegedly, and it can accept newer makes of active protection system as they become available. Its main gun is going to be the XM306, 120mm smoothbore with a pepper box muzzle brake that uh, clocks in 50% lighter than the L455 with a smaller profile of breech. It can also apparently fire the new AMP 4 1 programmable round, again negating the need to swap ammunition during the fight because the AMP 4 1 round replaces Hesh, Heat, um, Canister, and HEDP, I believe it's called. Actually, you know what? Put it up there, and I'm sure editor me will correct it in the future. The autoloader system. Yes, I have a long standing distrust of autoloader systems, but I'm coming around on them. The KF51 and the C3 upgrade are all going to have autoloaders, so I guess I'm getting my Luddite ass with the times. Now, this, however, isn't your average autoloader. All ammunition is stored in compartments that have blowout panels on them, in stark contrast to other tanks that store their ammunition right at the bottom of the turret. Now, even if this tank takes a smack to the old pew pew pockets, it's going to flame out, not pop off. Crew survivability seems to be at the forefront of planning here, which is quite delightful for once. And it nicely Dean Kamen's my way right into my final point. Go segways. My final point, the crew compartment. All three crewmen are going to be situated at the front of the hull in what I'm assuming is going to be an armored capsule, much like the T-14 Armada. Each crewman is going to have their own hatch. What I haven't seen in pictures is the interior of the hull or what the layout is, but I can make a few speculative guesses based on what I can see in the pictures. I'm assuming the driver is going to be situated at the far right and the 
Gunner is going to be probably dead center, and the commander is probably going to be on the far left. No, 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 not that far left, just the left. So, all hatches appear to have standard episcopes, and if I can trust my aging eyes, camera ports all around the hull to give that through armor view on the probably internal display ports. Now, given the commander's no longer got a 360 degree up, like up view on top of the turret with the old eyeball mark one, this is gonna be a bit of an advantage. Plus the integrated sensor packages are going to negate any disadvantages of not having old eyeball mark one up top. Now, if your enemy doesn't invest in paintball guns that can hit you from kilometers away, which is very unlikely, except for North Korea, which at the time of uh, publishing this video has admitted that their glorious leader has handcrafted artillery guns capable of doing such a feat putting the Americans firmly back in their place. All joking aside, I pointed out this flaw in my T-14 video, and I haven't been able to find it if it was overlooked or even just not yet considered. Either way, it's kind of a small, big flaw, kind of like an exhaust port hooked up to your main reactor on your multi-trillion dollar space station. But that's neither here nor there. So in finality, guys, while it's only a demonstrator, not a production vehicle, it's clearly showing that the American military industrial complex isn't simply resting on its laurels. It looks mean, it looks tough, fast, and oh so deadly. I can't wait to see this thing in live fire trials or even on video. And I'm more willing to bet that there's gonna be some teething problems to start with like a lot of vehicles, but realistically, it's nothing that won't be overcome in short order. Anyway, guys, that's going to be the video. If you like what I do here, give me the thumbs up down below. Maybe even hit that subscribe button. Like I mentioned earlier, none of you are actually even subscribed. We should change that. And with all that, guys, I'll see you on the next battlefield. Peace.